Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the special weekend edition of Markets Around the World. I hope you all had an amazing weekend. Today, we have lots of information to discuss. We'll be covering stocks, commodities, cryptocurrencies, macroeconomic leading indicators, and the hottest charts. Also, I want to take a moment to wish a happy Easter to all my Christian family out there. Today, we'll be discussing various data and upcoming news. Let's dive right in. Stock market manias are contagious. They don't just affect the stocks at the center of the mania, but they spread, affecting everything else. This poses a major and rising risk for ordinary 401k and IRA investors. It's a danger as they get drawn into mania stocks like the skyrocketing chip maker NVIDIA, current value 2.4 trillion or 36 times last year's revenues. But it's also a danger if you think you're avoiding these hot names by investing in simple index funds like the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust. Here's how it works. You start out with a few massive stocks that are booming and leaving the rest of the market behind. That's what we've seen over the past year and change with the so-called Magnificent Seven technology stocks, NVIDIA, Apple, Amazon, Google Parent Alphabet, Facebook Parent Meta, Microsoft, and Tesla. They were responsible for the lion's share of the performance of the broader S&P 500 last year. Today, those seven stocks alone account for just under 30% of the entire index's total value. What happens to the rest of the fund industry when a few big stocks leave the market in the dust? They start to look really bad. Any fund manager who either doesn't own these stocks or who holds a more rational weighting in them wakes up to find they are underperforming the index and a number of their clients are jumping ship to invest in index funds. Duh. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicated that despite recent inflation upticks and robust economic growth, U.S. interest rates are likely to remain high for the time being. While there's consensus among most economists that the Fed will cut rates this year, there's disagreement regarding the timing. Some, like Gover Chris Waller, believe inflation needs to slow further before rate cuts are warranted. Recent data shows strong consumer spending and job growth, indicating the economy's resilience. However, concerns persist about inflation, which has been running above target levels. Although there was a slight slowdown in service inflation, the overall trajectory remains uncertain. Powell maintains optimism about the economy, noting that the risk of a recession is low. Wall Street economists echo this sentiment, projecting steady growth in 2024. Despite expectations for rate cuts, the impact on inflation remains uncertain. With the next Consumer Price Index release scheduled for April 10, markets eagerly await further insights into inflation trends and the potential trajectory of interest rates. Top economists at major U.S. banks are predicting that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates three times this year, with the first reduction expected in June. This forecast comes despite the expectation that inflation is unlikely to slow much further in 2024. According to the latest forecast by the American Bankers Association, ABA, the U.S. economy is expected to remain robust, although growth is anticipated to decelerate from the pace seen last year. ABA economists project that gross domestic product, GDP, the official measure of economic activity, will slow to a rate of 1.7% in 2024 on a fourth quarter to fourth quarter basis, down from 3.1% in 2023. Furthermore, the ABA anticipates that the monthly job gains will also decrease to less than 150,000 on average in 2024, compared to over 250,000 in 2023. Despite the expectation of a softer U.S. economy, the ABA believes that inflation will continue to decrease, although not as rapidly as previously predicted. They foresee the Personal Consumption Expenditures, PCE, price index, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, ending 2024 at 2.4%, the same as the current 12-month rate. Let's expand the conversation and review some data I want to share with you all. We'll start with new home price decline. In the span of 16 months since their peak in 2022, new home prices have plummeted by approximately 20%. This sharp decline surpasses the rate at which new home prices fell during the 2008 crisis, which took 43 months for a similar 20% decrease, according to Reventure. 
the accelerated decline in new home prices indicates a more rapid downturn compared to the previous housing market crash. Despite efforts by home builders to stimulate demand through incentives such as reduced mortgage rates, the market remains sluggish. This suggests that underlying demand may not be as robust as initially perceived. A key factor contributing to the current housing market challenges is the insufficient supply of existing homes. CPI inflation is up for two straight months, the first time since September 2023. PPI inflation nearly doubled year over year, the highest since October 2023. PCE inflation increased in February, the first time since August 2023. Three-month annualized SuperCore is the highest since June 2023. Six-month annualized Core CPI is the highest since July 2023. Three-month annualized Core CPI is the highest since May 2023. Six-month annualized Services CPI is the highest since February 2023. Is higher for longer back? A notable development in the market is the significant increase in agricultural commodities, currently rising at an annual rate of 21%. This surge precedes the Consumer Price Index, CPI, by a notable three-month period. Such a trend suggests the onset of a second wave of inflation, indicating potential challenges ahead for economic stability and pricing dynamics. Energy equities are leading the way, suggesting a potential trajectory for oil prices to follow suit. Remarkably, these stocks have surpassed the levels observed during the Russian invasion in 2022. If these equities serve as an accurate roadmap for oil prices, it implies a remarkable 52% appreciation from the current WTI prices. Let's analyze the SPY one-hour chart. As of now, there appears to be no significant damage. Last week, we witnessed the market reaching new all-time highs by Friday. The chart still appears bullish to me. If the price manages to stay above the new all-time high at 524, my targets for next week will be 528 and 530. However, it's essential to consider potential downside risks. If the price fails to hold above the new all-time high, a retest of 518 could occur. Should this level not hold, the next target would be 512. It's important to note that this week may see increased volatility due to news events and the release of non-farm payroll NFP data. Moving on to the QQQ 4-hour chart, we're still within a range. If the price breaks below 443, we might see it move down to touch the trend line, potentially around 435. However, there's also the possibility of a bounce at this level. Conversely, if the price manages to break above 449, we could see potential upside for QQQ. This comes at an opportune time, as April seasonality typically favors tech companies. Turning our attention to the IWM weekly chart, a significant development is observed. If IWM manages to break above 212, there's potential upside momentum towards 227. However, it's crucial to remain cautious, as IWM is known for false breakouts. Confirmation of the breakout is essential, and the price must sustain above 212 to validate the upward movement. On the other hand, should the price decline upon reaching the 212 level, there's a possibility of a move down to the Wonder 98 area. The latest chart, Bitcoin, has quietly surged by $10,000 over the last seven days, yet it has received minimal media attention. After dipping to 60K, it formed a higher low, triggering a massive short squeeze. Now, Bitcoin is just 4% away from reaching a fresh all-time high. Since October 2023, crypto markets have collectively added $1.7 trillion in market capitalization. That's an average increase of $340 billion per month for five consecutive months. It appears that crypto is making a comeback. Bitcoin. Currently observing a much-needed pullback, possibly below the $65,000 thousand, we anticipate a floor in the demand zone between $60,000 thousand and $63,000 as the overall trend continues to point upward, our sentiment remains bullish. Bitcoin is currently priced at $62,750. I just want to express my gratitude to each of you for your support. I truly appreciate you all. If you found value in this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing it with others. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.